All right, Milton, welcome back to Gains O'Clock. Thanks for tuning in. This is my weekly Q&A series we do every single Friday where I'm answering all of your questions, all you out there, questions that I get, questions that you sent me specifically for this show. I'm going to cover it here, and it's going to be super beneficial to any and every single one of you watching the show today. So please make sure when you get something out of it, which is about to happen, you subscribe to the channel and you share the video because the more we can spread the word, the more people are going to get help from the answers here today. So thank you for submitting your questions. Let's dive right on in. Today, we got a solid 15, okay? This is pretty much all from the audience. So I didn't really bring in any of my own this week. Uh, I get a lot of these anyway, so I figured, you know what, this is good. 15 questions is good. I want you guys and you girls out there to be able to get this information and take it, run with it, get some, you know, start putting it to use, in other words. I don't want you sitting here listening to me talk for three hours and be like, you forgot 99% of everything, right? So this will be a good, nice little 15 question video, and then uh, hopefully you'll be able to take that and make some gains with it, okay? Let's dive right on in. This is Gains O'Clock. Tick tock. Tickety fucking tack. All right, so first question. This is coming from Jesse. Advice for working out with an injury. All right, so great question, Jesse. A lot of people don't know what to do. A lot of people get very concerned about their training, their physique overall when they have an injury. First thing you gotta understand is what you can do depends on what injury you got, right? And first thing you gotta understand, the most important thing is that you actually go to the damn doctor and they tell you and what you can and can't do, okay? So if it's not as serious as like, oh, maybe your shoulder's bugging you or something like that or your elbow's bugging you, like maybe that's not something you need to go to the doctor for per se right away if it's just some, you know, like a tweak, you slept weird or something like that. But if it's a legit injury, you hurt something or something's been chronically bugging you, strongly encourage you to go to the doctor and then of course listen to what they say, okay? Do what they say, don't go against what doctor Doctors say, and Coach Rye ain't no doctor, and I never pretend to be a doctor. So listen to doctors over me any day. As for any of you out there that got, you know, maybe an, uh, an ongoing kind of nagging little pain, something that's just bugging your knee, you know, your elbow, whatever. These kind of things come up. Maybe you stubbed your toe in the middle of the night, right? <laughs> like the amount of times that that's come up in my career is crazy. Clients hit me up, hey, I stubbed my toe last night, can hardly walk. What can I do? It's like that. And uh, the answer is, you still most of the time got a lot of your body that's gonna work okay. Unless you were like hit by a bus or some shit, you know, stubbing your toe, you might, your foot, your leg might be a little out of whack for whatever your leg day, but go in and do upper body instead, right? So do what you can do, work with what you can for your, you know, whatever's going on with you, the pain, the injury, whatever it is, try to work around it. What I always say to everybody, if you got something going, you got an elbow, you got a knee, you got a shoulder, something bugging you, don't do anything that hurts. It's a pretty good sign from your body. Your body legit saying, hey, you know what? This is bugging. Don't be doing it. Don't do anything that hurts. If you can do things that are not hurting, a lot of time it's okay. A lot of times it can be all right. And again, if it's a serious thing, if it's something that's chronically been bugging you, if it's something you haven't had checked out by a doctor, I strongly suggest you go to the doctor, get it checked out, and go from there. But otherwise, you can work around these little aches and pains, these little things that come up. Maybe you, you, know, you jammed your finger. I don't know what it is. Crazy stuff happens all the time. You can all the time work around those types of things. Just don't do exercises that cause pain and do what you can to train the same muscle groups uh, in a way that doesn't hurt. And there's a thousands and fucking thousands of different exercises you can actually do. If you need help for figuring out those exercises, go to teamffelex.com right now and uh, subscribe to the trial. I'll show you how to do it. I'll help you work around these things. Any of you out there with any problems or anything you need some different exercises, hit that website and we'll do that for you, teamffelex.com. All right, question number two. This is from Wes. How to deal with doms. The dreadful DOMS, for those of you that don't know what DOMS is, it's delayed onset muscle soreness, okay? And so that means basically after you've done a workout, you know, there's a period of time, 24, 48 hours later, sometimes a little longer, where you're going to be getting some serious soreness if you trained really hard or maybe you did something different or maybe you're not as conditioned, not used to, you know, training with whatever movement or intensity that you just did, you get quite sore. And sometimes it's really debilitating, right? I've done some leg days in my 
in my life where literally uh, I was on the ground like collapsed down just sore <laughs> just like so sore couldn't move you know you try to do the things that you can do to relieve the soreness it was just too much still so how do you deal with these things though how do you deal with the actual soreness the doms the dreadful doms basically it's a formula of a couple things maybe three four things I don't know let's see uh, first things first stay hydrated okay you gotta stay super super hydrated your body when it goes into the process of recovering the work that you did in the gym it needs a lot a lot of water to do so okay the hydration effect of the body is actually what helps you repair the muscles so make sure that you're staying hydrated you can do other things to try to stay extra hydrated like getting some electrolytes in your water and stuff like that what I usually say is just you know take a pinch of sea salt sprinkle it in your water that helps a ton you can also go buy you know different whatever electrolyte waters and stuff at the store or mineral waters if you don't want to do it the other way and you want to pay more but sea salt is great pink home Malayan salt is even better. Sprinkle that in the water there, you know, and it's going to be good. Try to get a, enough water in. Water amounts differs for every person, but you know, half a gallon to a gallon, that's probably what you need in a day. That's going to fit most people. So try to do that. Make sure you're super hydrated, okay? That's step one. Step two for dealing with the DOMS would be making sure that you're up on your protein intake, okay? Big, big part of the process. Nutrition overall is important, but especially the protein when you're really, really sore because what's happening is your body is rebuilding, it's regenerating. That's what the soreness you're experiencing is. It's, you know, it's the acids and all this in the muscle tissue, but having the protein be in the right spot helps you build back faster, helps you recover faster, in other words. So for lack of going into way too much scientific detail for you here, scientifical is a word today, by the way, hashtag scientifical. <laughs> if you're watching the show but basically if you go in and you get the protein it's going to help you recover faster it's going to be better for your gains overall whatever so make sure your protein intake you're hitting it better if you've been lackadaisical with it and you stay on top of it from here on out that will help you with doms over the long term okay number three thing to deal with the doms how do you get rid of them doms you got to roll out okay you got to roll out a lot of people say stretch don't <laughs> I'm going to tell you, stretching ain't going to really help you. A lot of people can lay on the floor and try to fucking put their leg over their head. It's not going to help you if you're really, really sore. Rolling out, myofascial release, foam rolling, in other words, and, you know, rolling with other implements like lacrosse balls, tennis balls. You know, they got all these different kinds of massage balls these days. But the point is, rolling out is actually going to help you a lot more than any type of stretch. Stretching is pretty overrated, in my opinion. Uh, for the most part, it doesn't serve a huge purpose to a lot of things. If you train in the right movements, if you're doing full range of motions, and if you do rolling and things like that, it's going to help a lot. What actually happens when you're doing myofascial release, by the way, which is the rolling, is basically you're rehydrating the myofascial tissues in your body. A lot of people think this is for only the muscles it's not yeah of course when you roll around on a foam roller or ball you're compressing the muscles too but it's also the myofascial tissue and the myofascial tissue is basically your second layer of skin that goes over all your muscles responsible for making sure they can slide glide and move the way you need them to for everyday life like walking and also for exercise so a lot of times that stuff the myofascial tissue actually cinches up on you and gets tight and it's restricted from blood flow when it's tight right think of your hand like this if you had your hand squeezed like this and you're squeezing real hard there's no blood flow going on here right but as I continue to do this squeeze and then open it squeeze and open it the blood flow would actually start to be pumping into the palm here so that's what you're doing with the myofascial tissues that's what you're doing this is way too much of a hashtag scientific answer for you but the point is it will help you tremendously with that soreness if you can do that okay if you can get on the roller a lot of times it's very hard so if you're sore it's gonna hurt it's gonna hurt I'm gonna tell you straight up it will hurt but it will be better beneficial for you and you'll feel better when you're done. So if you got those three things going, that's probably a great start. The fourth thing that I might say is maybe you need to take a little bit of rest and assess your program. Proper training involves maximal intensity when you're in the gym and then maximal recovery when you're out of the gym. Sometimes people are doing too much. Sometimes people are just beating the body down, berating it with all these sets and reps and weights and all this, and that's not going to help you get better results. It's not going to help you get there faster. You're basically not recovering, and thus you could get into a point where you're overtraining to a degree, meaning not that you're actually training too hard, but you're not allowing for the recovery process to happen. So you're actually under-recovering in another sense. So that's something you need to look at. 
that. Start with those first three, you know, get the water right, get the nutrition right, and then roll the fuck out, and you're going to be feeling pretty good probably, and that's going to be enough. And then obviously follow a good training program. If you need some help with that, go to teamffflex.com. I say it all the time. You're probably seeing a little pop-up swiping right now at the bottom. Point is, it's important to do. That should help you with those doms, though. All right? Alright, alright, let's dive in. Question three, we're moving right along. I know I'm talking a lot today, it must be something in the coffee. Okay, question number three, this is from Jenny. Uh, I want to compete in wellness. I have extra body fat. Should I cut it first? Good question, Jenny. The answer would be, it depends when the competition you want to do is, okay? And it also depends, number two, if you already have the right muscular proportion to compete in wellness. So MPC Wellness is coming, it's 2020, it's actually gonna happen now in just a few weeks. We'll see the first one, it's gonna go on through the year and so on and so forth, brand new division. And basically with that, this is a heavily lower body dominant division. So a lot of people are jumping in here, a lot of women are trying to do this, a lot of bikini competitors transitioning over. The most important thing though that's gonna make a good wellness competitor is gonna be a really stacked jacked lower body okay we're talking glutes quads hamstrings really good development here in these areas so if you got extra body fat right now Jenny I wouldn't say it's a huge issue if you're in your building phase if you're building the muscle you're trying to get these proportions down and trying to get these shapes down if you do have that already and you're like oh I gotta compete in you know I want to do a show in the next three, four months, five months, well, yeah, maybe it's time to start the prep early. I wouldn't say cut first and then prep. That's because a prep is a cut anyway. So basically I would say maybe do a longer prep. If you haven't prepped before, uh, you know, obviously you would want to work with a coach for these things. I suggest a coach, even if you're a pro competitor, you're very experienced, you need a coach to help guide you through these things, especially for wellness because it's a brand new division. So I would suggest um, that you don't cut extra body fat off, honestly. I would say just lengthen your prep if you need it. If you know how you're going to spawn, good. Maybe you don't need to do that. But regardless, even if you have a little extra body fat right now, it's not making a difference for the physique you're trying to build. Off-season physiques, improvement season physiques, as I say, are you know generally going to carry more body fat as it is. So if you are significantly more, you know, you have a lot of weight to lose, like 15, 20, 30 pounds, then yeah, probably cut for a while first. Do a stint to cutting for, until you're in a more close to, you know, your competition weight, in other words, and see where you go from there. I'm down to totally help you out with this on the free trial. Go check that out. I'll show you how to do it, Jenny. Thanks for the question. All right. Question number four. This is from Tifo. Can you implement power building style training? into a bodybuilding program? The answer is absolutely you can. I train a lot of my competitors, a ton, tons and tons. Actually, honestly, it's probably all of them with a, an approach that's very similar to that. An approach where you're doing power building uh, in the actual program. For those of you that don't know what power building is, it's basically this idea that you know you should do some power movements, compounds, squats, back squats, you know, um, deadlifts, bench press, big heavy rows, this type of stuff where you're doing lower reps, heavier sets of weights, all that kind of stuff, and then you sprinkle in bodybuilding exercise at the end, you know, uh, so basically, it is an approach that is very, very useful. I would definitely do that for all the male competitors I coach. A lot of you probably like, whoa, you coach male competitors, bro? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and uh, I definitely give them the power building because it builds a lot of muscle. I do compound exercise for literally every type of competitor I train, though. So, yes, the power building approach is a great approach to bring in your bodybuilding. You got to know how it's going to fit your physique, though. You don't want to just follow some generic, weird power building program. Everything has to be custom for you all the time. It's got to be custom for attaining the look that you need to attain and getting where you, you getting you where you need to be in other words okay so that's super important make sure you know that tiffo make sure you're building these things out for yourself and make sure it's going to get you the physique you need to get on stage and do good all right next thing um are the foods that produce or reduce cellulite from kayleen okay this is uh something i've talked about before is why she brought it up she thought it might be useful for y'all 
But basically what it is, is uh, yeah, there are specific foods that can help reduce and specific foods that do increase cellulite. For those of you that don't know what cellulite is, a lot of people think it's body fat and stuff like this. It's just like, the, you know, it's that cottage cheesy type look for lack of a better term that sometimes happens. Happens to men and women, by the way. It's not just for women, but it can happen for sure. And what it always actually kind of correlates to is a pH balance in the body. And a lot of you are probably like, what, the, what does that even mean, coach, right? What are you talking Talking about the alkalinity levels of your body is really what it comes down to okay so if you have a heavy acidic environment in your body you are more likely to get cellulite and things of that nature because it's actually very closely related to the pH alkalinity in your body okay so some things you can do is make sure you get your pH better and that's gonna help yourself like a lot of the time of course you got to have proper training proper nutrition you can't spot reduce things though so you can't say oh I have a little bit of this on the back of my leg I want to train that 50,000 times and see if it'll go away no improve your pH and it's probably going to help a ton, okay? And so how do you do that type of stuff? How do you improve your pH? Well, I've done videos on it, I've done content on it, there's stuff at teamffleyx.com on it, but for just a quick, you know, jab here, make sure your water intake's right. Make sure you're getting green vegetables, lots and lots of good, healthy green vegetables in your diet that's going to help you balance your pH. You can do different stuff like lemon water, drinking lemon water throughout the day, uh, apple cider vinegar, great, great thing to help your pH. And basically what you're doing is you're restoring your natural acidity in your body. You can even get pH test strips if you want and test your own pH, you know, dab it on your tongue, see where you're at. But if you're in an acidic environment, um, if you have cellulite, in other words, I would say you're probably likely in an acidic environment in your body. And so you would want to get more of an alkaline environment that's going to help with cellulite a ton. So definitely check that out. More resources for that. TeamFFLEX.com. deal with neck cramps. This is from Aryan. Basically, neck cramps and things like that, talking about the traps, the, you know, scaps, the rhomboids, all this stuff in your back, right? So the stuff that comes up is your neck gets tight when this gets tight or your pecs get tight. So basically, if you got neck cramps going on, things like that, there's a few things you got to look at. Hydration keeps coming up today. You got to make sure you're hydrated. You got to make sure you're getting enough water. Again, do that pink Himalayan salt, do all that. That'll help a ton. Right away, electrolyte balance is important. Potassium, magnesium, zinc, all that stuff. Important to make sure that you got basically, you know, the right amount of muscular infrastructure water going on that's going to allow you to not get cramps, right? Because if you're dehydrated to any degree, your muscles are going to cramp up a ton, okay? So make sure your water's right. Make sure you got those electrolytes in there. That pink Himalayan salt, all that, like I've already said three times today, is great. Try some of that. And then I would suggest, obviously, some rolling, okay? Some rolling of the upper body. So you'd actually do it not with a foam roller like we talked talked about earlier, uh, we were talking about doing it with like a lacrosse ball, a tennis ball, and you do it on the wall. You'd want to roll out your pecs, so roll out up here, roll out your back and your traps and your scaps, your shoulders, kind of loosen up the whole upper body. I got videos on this on YouTube, actual exact routines. I think it's called the neck fix is what I call it, the five minute neck fix. Because basically if you do this stuff, it will help a ton. And overall, then you got to look at the final bit, which is your postural stuff. Like a lot of people sit all day like this. Right, they got their shoulder shrug, they're at the computer, or they're at work, or whatever, and they wonder why they got a stiff, you know, cramped neck or whatever. It's basically because you got your muscles in lock long, lock short mode all the time, 24-7, you know, doing this stuff. And then also how you train. If you're using your traps and your scaps way too much when you're training, you know, doing different stuff, you're basically overloading muscle and it's gonna cramp up on you. So start with those three things, get that hydration right. Get the uh, rolling right, and then make sure you're checking your posture both outside and inside the gym, and that'll probably help a ton. All right, number seven, I'm underweight, and I am wondering if I should reach a certain weight before working out to prevent losing any other calories during exercise. Great question. Okay, so basically, this, client, this person here, this, this person that submitted this question, 
uh, needs to gain some weight and they're worried about the fact that if they're doing exercise you're basically burning calories right when you go to the gym obviously you're burning calories you're not keeping calories and so what I would tell you to do is to definitely go to the gym because that's going to help you get your weight up even if you're underweight it will help you get your weight up you know start lifting putting on some muscle doing things like that the thing that you got to have right though is the nutrition so you can't go to the gym and just kind of play around, gamble around, and then leave and you know have a little snack or something. You're going to have to have a dedicated training and a dedicated nutrition program. You absolutely can and should be going to the gym, but you got to have the nutrition right too to go with it. So they got to match hand in hand. If they don't, it's going to be very difficult to do anything. Um, but sitting at home... You know, not training for fear of burning calories at the gym is not necessarily the right idea. What I would say is you just need to have a program, a nutrition plan in other words, that is going to replenish the calories that are lost during the gym. Pretty simple like that, right? So, you know, if I'm building someone a workout program, for example, what I'm doing is I'm building their workouts and then I'm building nutrition saying, okay, well, here's what I want them to do for training. I look at all these days, look at all this activity, look at all this and that. All right, now here's the nutrition. They need this much food for this fuel and for that and for this exercise. You know what I mean? So it's very meticulous the way that I do things, but in a general sense, you got to have the nutrition, support the training and the training, support the nutrition, and that will get you whatever goal you want to get. So I would suggest for sure follow a program, follow a nutrition plan, make sure they're both custom built for you and make sure they both mesh together. That's what I would suggest. Okay, number eight, we're moving right along fam. Thank you for watching. You've been here so far. Please make sure you subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and share this video. We are talking about Let's see, this is from Ashley. I feel like I'm starting from zero again after the holidays. What's the best way to get on track? Ashley, I'll tell you straight up, you're not alone. This is a lot of people this time of year. A lot of people fall off with their fitness goals. Just because the season, the drink and the eat and all that stuff that comes up. And basically a lot of people, I even got messages from my own clients this week saying this stuff. And I'm like, oh no, come on now. That's not true. And that's what I'm saying to you too. Yeah, it's actually not true. You're not starting from zero just because you got off track for a few weeks. I don't mean, you could have done some bander work. I don't know who you are or what you did. You could have done some stuff. But either way, here's how you get it back on track. You basically got to understand that what worked before will work again as long as you do it again, right? So what happened was you were following something, I'm assuming, you were getting some results. If you say you start from zero, that implies that you made some form of progress before. So now what you want to do is basically snap back into that old routine. Ditch the one that's been not serving you for the past few weeks over the holidays, you know, all the eating, the drinking, whatever, the not tracking, the skipping the gym. Well, reverse it. Go back to what you were doing a few months ago when everything was good and everything was progressing and it's going to work again and a lot of people you know they're concerned that you know it won't work it's not gonna be the same I gotta do extra work I got no don't do extra work go back to what was working and stay consistent consistency is what wins every time when it comes to your fitness goals when it comes to your nutrition goals your training goals whatever goals you got it's that consistency that's gonna bring through so trying to do stuff too extreme right away because you're like oh no I gotta recoup is not the right idea what the right idea is okay my routine's been off I've been doing all these things wrong, not in the right sense, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to what I was doing before that served me well, that got me where I wanted to be, and now I'm going to do it again, and that's exactly what you actually need to do right here, actually, to get back on track. It's what any of you out there that got off track need to do, just get back on your damn routine, get back on track, and stay dedicated, stay consistent, and you're going to get there, you're going to be just fine, all right? Question number nine is from Rachel. If I have an underdeveloped muscle, should I work it every day? The answer will be, Rachel, no. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that, okay? This is a common thought process. I know that a lot of people think this. I know a lot of people do this. I know that a lot, a lot of people do this. You know, they want to build glutes or something, for example, so they're training glutes every day or, you know, abs or shoulders, whatever. doesn't work that way. The body works, as I said, I think even earlier in this video, it's like, a premonition almost, hashtag premonition, is 
the fact that basically the body works when it's trained hard and then you gotta recover. So you're gonna go train hard in the gym, but you gotta recover. Muscles are never built in the gym. You're not gonna build in the gym. Like I could go to the gym and do curls eight hours a day. My arms are not gonna get bigger because I have no recovery, right? I gotta, I gotta go home and actually recover. So that's why people do splits where they do a training here, like back day Monday. They won't train back again until Friday. You know what I mean? Something like that. Every split's different, all that generic example. But the point is, you gotta have the process of recovery. So if you have a weak, underdeveloped area, something you're trying to bring out, maybe it's a, a personal thing, maybe it's a thing from competitions, I don't know what it is, but if you wanna bring something up, the thing that you can do that's gonna be the best, get a training program that's gonna take care of it. It's gonna assess it, and it's gonna see where you need to be. Like if I saw somebody and I'm like, a training competitor, I'm like, okay, they need more, they need some more glutes, they need some more shoulders, whatever. I'm gonna build the program that's gonna do that, and then I'm gonna say, okay, we need to hit this exercise, that exercise, this set, that rip, this tempo, that one, this pause, this superset, boom! Put it out, let them go to work, and then I'd be like, okay, now you recover. I'm not at all gonna have them do it every day. If you do it every day, they're actually gonna get worse. Your weak points will get worse. Your weak points will get weaker if you train them every day, and that's the truth. So get a good training program. Don't try to do extra. Don't think you can do it faster. Don't think you can do it better. The actual better, faster approach would be just doing it and recovering and letting your body grow because remember, these gains happen in the recovery process, all right? Question number 10. Oh, I love this question, by the way. This is one of my favorites from the list. This is from Valerie. Is it a good idea to work with multiple coaches? Example, diet coach, trainer in the gym, posing coach, and competition coach. This is one of my favorite questions because this is something, this is one of my own pet peeves, something that comes up all the time. Was, you know, it's come up in the past at least, not all the time, but in the past where some of my clients will be like, hey, you know what I was thinking about doing? Uh, I want to train with this person too. I want to do this on the side. I want to do this and that. No, 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 not a good idea. Too many damn chefs in the kitchen. So that's what I always say. You can't have too many people involved in your prep if you want the best prep, right? What I honestly believe is the best way to do it, no matter who you work with, whether it's me, anybody else, don't care. What matters is, is that it's consistent and then it matches. You'll hear me reiterate four times in this damn video already today how important it is for the training match the nutrition. So if you're gonna go get a separate nutrition coach, and then a separate training coach in the gym. And then a different coach to tell you what to do in the gym. And then another put now you got like four different damn chefs trying to make you one meal. The meal is the winning first place on stage with your trophy, right? Well, now how are these people gonna all work together? How am I gonna find your nutrition coach, find this person, find that person, and make sure everybody's harming it? It's just not gonna work. You're setting yourself up for failure, and honestly, those expenses must be through the damn roof. So this is a great question, Valley, but no, I definitely don't suggest it's a good idea to work with more multiple coaches, I think you should get one coach that can do it all and stay with them and then maybe, hey, maybe that coach doesn't work out, maybe that's not the best fit for you, great. Go to a different coach, do the same thing, find the coach that's going to work for you, but don't try to find five coaches once to work on you because it's just not going to work. You're wasting your time, you're wasting your money, and in my honest professional opinion, there is no way that that will ever produce the best result for you no matter what level of competitor you are at, beginner, first timer, pro, whatever, it's not the best idea at all to work with multiple people, multiple coaches. Pick one, stick with one, make sure they can do it all, make sure everything's going to match together and you're going to get the best result, I promise you that. All right, question 11. What fat burner is the best fat burner? This is from Ashley. Ashley, the best fat burner is nutrition, <laughs> okay? There's no easy way to say it. You gotta have the right nutrition. You gotta have the right training. That's it. I'm not a huge advocate of supplements. I'm not gonna spend any time on this question. Fat burners basically are just caffeine. So go get yourself a cup of coffee. Make yourself a cup of green tea. Drink it before you go to the gym. Good to go. You give yourself a little caffeine boost. Might help you just a little bit. Fat burners basically don't do anything. A lot of them are, you know, just garbage in a can that uh, costs you money. So I would avoid it. I would say invest more on your food, invest more on your nutrition, invest more on your coaching maybe. Don't invest more in buying supplements because the best result for fat loss is going to come from that training and that nutrition. Anybody that wants to argue with me, fucking DM me. All right, here we go. Question number 12. We're moving right along, fam. Just a couple more. I'm going to keep speeding through here, trying to get you through. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. 
Can you have alcohol and still get lean? Great question for this time of year. Not anymore though, because now the New Year's is over, but yeah, you can, absolutely. You gotta track your macros, that's what I always say. This is from Jake, I don't know if I said it was from Jake, but the alcohol, Jake, you can have it. You just gotta track it, okay? So, I'll tell you straight up, alcohol's empty calories for you though, bro. Like, you're gonna drink it, and you know, you throw back a couple beers, you're six, seven, eight hundred calories deep, and you feel hungry, and that's the issue, right? That People don't actually gain weight from drinking, people gain weight from what they do why they've been drinking, right? Like, I've definitely been there where I've had a couple of too many glasses of wine, and then I found myself ordering a pizza at 1 a.m., you know, it happens. So, basically, what you gotta pay attention to is the fact that if you're gonna have alcohol, track it in your goals, and then make sure that when you've been drinking, you know, you don't end up getting a little tipsy and ordering extra stuff, because that'll be what actually does you in. But yeah, you can track it. I got resources to tell you how to do it on teamffnlx.com. There's actually not many macros on like my fitness power or something like that if you try to Google it. And usually the labels are wrong. So uh, I'll tell you how to do it. Go to teamffnlx.com and you can see it. You can see how to do the macro tracking. Just subscribe to the list. I'll tell you exactly how to how to track your alcohol so that you can still get results. But to answer your question more specifically, yes, you can still get lean, drink alcohol. Absolutely. All right. What is the biggest mistake you see competitors make? This is from Allison. Allison, biggest mistake I see competitors make, honestly, would be not following their programs. Like, that's it, straight up. That's what I see universally. For all the coaches, all the people in the business, all the things, I know talking to all of them, because I know all the coaches and things like that, the top level trainers, whatever, is uh, when people have problems, because they didn't do what they were told. Simple as that. When I've had problems with clients, not getting the result, they're not doing the best, it's because they thought they could do it better. They thought that I wasn't being aggressive enough. They thought that, you know, maybe I was being too aggressive. And then they change their plan, they change their approach, they do less sets, they do less reps, they do more macros, less macros. They think they're going to do something better than their coach, and that's what always ends up being the fault of them, right? Because when you do that, when you're training for a composite, uh, competition, it's very, very highly thought out training, right? It's very, very meticulous. We're literally trying to build an entire physique to go stand in front of judges on stage to try to win a trophy, okay? It's, it is something that is very, very finite. It is almost like being a sculptor with clay. You gotta figure out each little piece where you need to be, how it's gonna work, and then how you can actually attain that specific look. And so when a plan is built out and you have a good coach, and don't get me wrong, there's bad coaches, but when you have a good coach and you build out a plan and they build you one out, you should execute it at 100% accuracy. Because if you don't, now your coach is looking at you saying, whoa, that's weird, I built this plan and now I'm seeing this result, why, I don't know, change this, that, then, right? Because that's what I do when I'm coaching. I'm building programs and I'm adjusting them. I'm looking at this person every single week in check-ins, posing videos, whatever, saying, okay, where are we at? What's going on? What needs to change to get to that first place trophy? And so with that, you gotta understand that if you're out there sneaking macros, you're cheating on your macros, you're doing less than you were told, you're trying to add in cardio or change your programming, you're just basically throwing shit in the pot that doesn't need to be there, and it's actually gonna not serve you. And so that's what happens to so many competitors. I know that a lot of people get in their head and think that all of a sudden they know how they're gonna outsmart their coach, but in reality, you gotta remember this shit. You could fucking go, your car breaks down, you could go on YouTube and look up a video on how to fix it. Most of you don't do that, because you say, okay, the car's way too complicated, I don't wanna fuck the car up, because it won't run. But you do that shit with your own physiques and your own training all the damn time, which is a mistake. Leave it to the damn experts. If you invested in coach, you hired a coach, then it's time to let the coach do their job. Let them do what they are paid for and do it at your 100% so you can get the best result and stand on stage with that first place trophy. All right, question number 14, two to go, fam. Two to go, two to go. Can you win NPC competitions naturally? This is from Stacy. Great question, absolutely. A lot of you probably don't know this. Team Flex never coached one person with any performance enhancing drugs, steroids, or anything else, okay? Literally, the entire history of my coaching, male, female, everybody, pros, amateurs, first timers, everybody winning their shows, 
Never. Never have used any performance enhancing drugs. Never have given people those. Never told people to take steroids or any of those compounds. Nothing anabolic, nothing androgenic, any of that stuff. None of it. None of it. Zero. Zip, zilch, nada, nothing. Alright? So, with that, that's my answer. Like, Team Flex, we got hundreds and hundreds, thousands of first place trophies at this point after all these years of coaching, and I've never once had to do it. So, yes, you absolutely can. I wouldn't suggest that you go take anything. I would suggest you stay natural all the time to do these damn competitions. It's the best way to go for your health, for your life, through the longevity of the sport, and for the rest of your damn life. Don't go mess yourself up trying to take drugs and cheat. Okay? Just just do the process, get the training, get the nutrition, do the stuff, and you will get the result. You can absolutely win shows naturally. Uh, do it every fucking day. Alright. Question number 15. Last one, fam. Last one. Thank you for watching Games Clock. Last one. How important is my stage weight for my first competition? This is from Nicole. Uh, your first competition stage weight. Let me tell you stage weights. They don't matter for any competition. First, 15th, 20th, 80th, 90th, I don't know. They don't matter for really any competition, okay? Stage weight is, uh, is a thing that so many people get in their head about. So many women especially get very concerned about their stage weight. Men as well, don't get me wrong. But point is, the stage weight is not something that is the make or break for a competitor. You're not getting weighed in when you go compete in these divisions. So there are some you do, don't get me wrong, but not this one that we're talking about. Uh, you're not getting weighed in. So if you're not getting weighed in, you don't need to worry about stage weight. What you got to worry about is that aesthetic, the look. How are you going to look on stage? That's what judges are looking at. They're not saying, oh, well, she looks like she's probably about five pounds more than her, so let's place her first. That's not what happens. Whoever brings the physique that fits the category best will win the competition most of the time. But keep in mind, you're looking at muscle. You're looking at symmetry, shape, size, proportion, conditioning, posing, presentation. All those things are way, way, way more important than your stage weight. Uh, do I I use stage weights probably a little bit here and there, uh, but only because I'm using it as a gauge to see if my athlete is actually making progress, right? Like if I have somebody who's constantly at the same stage weight, it's likely that whatever the hell's going on is not working. And fortunately, that never happens because I know what I'm doing. So basically, I'm looking at different weights. I'm looking at everything every week. Though. I'm looking at posing, check-ins, videos, measurements. Weight's the last thing I care about. Do I have people do it? Yeah, because I need to know what's going on with every part of their physique if they're a competitor, but I'm not making any damn changes I'll tell you straight up off of what the fucking scale says. Thank you for watching Games O'Clock. My name is Ryan Melton. I'm from Team Flex and I'm here every single Friday giving you the Q&A, the answers that you want to know, the things you want to hear. It's going to help you get where you want to be faster. That's my goal all the time. That's what I do this show for. Please make sure you subscribe. Please make sure you share. Please make sure you thumbs up, comment if you like it, send me your questions. I'll be back here uh, on Monday because it's just one of the five awesome shows I run every single week. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel, share the video. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. Coach Rye is out.